In this video, we are going to solve a numerical question on molar conductivity and dissociation constant. So let's see what the question says. Conductivity of a 0.0024 molar acetic acid solution is 7.895 into 10 power minus 5 Siemens per centimeter. Calculate its molar conductivity and dissociation constant. Seems pretty straightforward, right? So let's list down the steps involved in solving this question. So the first step is a straightforward one. We need to calculate the molar conductivity and we can do that by using this formula. Molar conductivity is equal to conductivity of the solution in Siemens per centimeter divided by concentration in moles per liter. So you can see that both of these values are given in our question and we simply need to substitute them in this equation to get the answer. Now the second part of the question says we need to find out the dissociation constant. But in order to find out the dissociation constant, we need the information on degree of dissociation alpha, right? So the second step is basically calculating alpha. And we can calculate alpha using this formula which is molar conductivity of acetic acid divided by limiting molar conductivity of acetic acid. Now you get this value of molar conductivity directly from step 1 so you can substitute that in the numerator. But how do we find the limiting molar conductivity here? Well for that we need to use the information that is given here. So we'll see how to do that when we solve this part okay. And lastly to calculate the dissociation constant we use the formula Ka is equal to C alpha square by 1 minus alpha. In this step you simply need to substitute the value of alpha from step 2 in this particular equation to get the dissociation constant. So now that we have written down what steps are involved in solving this question, why don't you pause the video here and find out these answers. Alright, so let's see if we got the same answer, okay. So the first step is calculating molar conductivity. And for that we have to substitute these values in this equation and that gives us molar conductivity is equal to 7.895 into 10 power minus 5 Siemens per centimeter divided by the concentration of the solution which is 0.0024 moles per liter. Now you can see that the units are different here and in order to ensure consistent units we need to convert this liter into centimeter cube. So 1 liter is 1000 cubic centimeter. And by substituting this in this equation, we get 7.895 into 10 per minus 5 semen per centimeter divided by the concentration term which is 0.0024 mole per 1000 centimeter cube. And on solving, we get the final value of molar conductivity as 32.89 semen centimeter square per mole. Okay, so this is the value of molar conductivity and it basically shows the conductivity exhibited per mole of the electrolyte. Let's now look at the second step which is to calculate the degree of dissociation alpha. Alpha is equal to molar conductivity divided by the limiting molar conductivity of acetic acid. Now molar conductivity is 32.89 semen centimeter square per mole that we just calculated from the step 1. And we can estimate this value by using the Kohl-Roch's law of independent migration of ions. According to Kohl-Roch's law, the limiting molar conductivity of an electrolyte at infinite dilution is the sum of the individual contributions of the anion and the cation of the electrolyte. So basically the limiting molar conductivity of acetic acid can be written as the sum of the molar ionic conductivities of the cation and the anion which is lambda naught H plus plus lambda naught CH3 COO minus. Now here nu plus and nu minus refer to the number of cations and anions that are produced when our electrolyte acetic acid undergoes dissociation. So we know that acetic acid on dissociation gives CH3COO minus anion and H plus cation. So it's just one anion and one cation. So both of these become one. Now the limiting molar ionic conductivities of H plus and CH3CO minus can be obtained from these values. You see the limiting molar conductivity of each of these electrolytes can be written as the sum of the molar ionic conductivities of the constituent cations and anions. Right? And when we write them in this fashion where we are adding the molar conductivities of sodium acetate and HCl and subtracting NaCl from it, we can see that eventually we get the same value as the limiting molar ionic conductivities of H plus and CH3CO minus. So here the Na plus and Na plus gets cancelled, Cl minus gets cancelled 
and what we have is eventually the limiting molar ionic conductivities of H plus and CH3CO minus. And how do we get this? So this is the contribution from the limiting molar conductivity of HCl. This is that of sodium acetate and this is that of sodium chloride. And when we substitute these values in this equation, we get the final answer as 390.5 Siemens centimeter square per mole. Now we can simply substitute this value in this equation of alpha to get the degree of dissociation. And when we do that, we get the final value as alpha is equal to 0 0.084. This value of alpha tells us how much of our electrolyte can turn into ions and its ionization behavior in a solution. We know that for weak electrolytes like acetic acid, alpha should be much less than 1 which is consistent with the value that we got here. So our next step is to calculate the dissociation constant which is pretty straightforward. For that, we simply need to substitute the value of concentration and alpha that we just got into this equation and when we do that we get the final answer as Ka is equal to 1.848 into 10 power minus 5 moles per liter. Clearly you can see that this value is low and it shows that at equilibrium we have less amounts of ions CH3CO- and H+, and acetic acid is mostly present in the undissociated form. Now the good thing is that as we increase dilution, equilibrium shifts favoring more products and as a result more acetic acid gets dissociated increasing the number of ions in the solution and the molar conductivity of the solution also increases. Now just for comparison, here we have two different concentrations of acetic acid and the corresponding values of their molar conductivity and dissociation constants. From our question we got these values that is 0 0.0024 molar acetic acid has a molar conductivity of 32.89 Siemens centimeters square per mole, alpha which is 0 0.084 and dissociation constant which is about 1.85 into 10 per minus 5 moles per liter. Now a diluted acetic acid would be expected to have an increased molar conductivity right because with more dilution the molar conductivity is supposed to increase. You can see that reflecting here as well molar conductivity of a 0 0.001 molar acetic acid solution is 48.15 Siemens centimeter square per mole which is higher than what we got in this case. Similarly, the degree of dissociation is also higher 0.123 as compared to 0 0.084 that we got in our question. And lastly, dissociation constant is almost similar. There is not much variation here because we know that Ka is more of an intrinsic property and indicates how strong an electrolyte is. It doesn't really change with concentration or dilution. So this small difference observed here, we can attribute that to experimental conditions or experimental error. But broadly, the Ka remains constant. So this is a small peek into the concept of how molar conductivity changes with concentration of our electrolyte.